this is going to be a very so normally when you see uh the examples with the, the yeah, an adversarial tutorial this is going to be a, a very introductory very simple for people that are not familiar with ai or or adversarial examples at all um but you always see the same image and i'm going to paint it put it later of this panda and then yeah I just wanted to do something different and just to try to abstract it a little bit. Let's imagine we, we have this sort of uh, self-driving vehicle and then we have two systems in place, one visual systems that detects images and then one like voice command option that you would tell the, the model to go up, down, like the card, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so this, obviously we're going to do a very, very dumbed down, simple example that is now complaining to version is not defined. I didn't import it, did I? Uh, Just in case, then what happens when you move the cells around? Huh. Yeah, so we're using this uh, GTSRB, and that is it stands German Traffic Signal something something i have no idea but it's basically a, a data set of, of traffic signals right so we're going to have to to train a model now that is going to see a traffic signal and it will tell us what the traffic signal means so there are 43 classes here uh like speed 120 30 60 um all of that again uh didn't import torch see this is what happens you didn't came prepared man yeah. I move. I move the cells. The cells around. I, th an, I think I have an error. An error. You need an error. You you, you write it. Yeah. I, I'm gonna copy the whole thing because otherwise it's gonna. Okay. Start complaining. Because I loaded the data first. I think that's more informative, and then you can explain the data set a little bit better. Yeah. Sounds good. So, yeah, this is what the data set looks like. So again, this is a very very dumb, simplified version of the data set. We're assuming. Uh, kind of like we only see the images as they are. We don't have to scan the whole image and then detect which one is the traffic part, which it sh like it shouldn't be too difficult. Um, but yeah, it's easier if we already have this data sets. Also, I trick like I trimmed a little bit the images so they're in a smaller and a lower resolution. So that's why they look uh, a little bit shady. Um, so, so this thing trains faster because otherwise we're going to be here for a while. Um, so yeah, this is this is the, the sample images that we, we will be showing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, uh, I guess I showed the classes here before. So these are these are the forty three classes that this data set has. So all the speed ones, uh, the crossings, like all the attention signals, turn right or left, all of that. Um, we're going to be using a very very simple neural network. So this is an architecture kind of based on or like traditional image recognition architectures, which is like convolutional layers, max pool layers, and then you have a ReLU activation. That's not really relevant now. Uh, I'm using PyTorch. I'm going to be using TensorFlow for the other one. So these are the two frameworks uh, leading more or less neural networks right now. Like Torch is backed by Facebook, open source. TensorFlow is backed by Google, also open source. And yeah, this is the architecture for all of you that are into this, uh, but again, it's very simple, not a lot going on. So let's try another model for 10 epochs. An epoch is uh, how much time the model goes over the data. So 10, like the model will go over all the data 10 times. Um, and yeah, I'm using the the GPU here in Colab, so it's faster and the rest of the stuff is just PyTorch code, like the loss function that we're using, the atom optimizer, that's not relevant for for our example here. So yeah, it's going to take a, a little bit, maybe something like two, three minutes training. So mm -hmm. if you have questions uh, in the chat or if you have questions, Carlos, if you want to explain something, like if you want me to explain something that was not very clear to you or, or you think to the viewers, uh, or maybe what we can start doing is yeah, explaining more or less what an adversarial attack is, right? Yeah, that would and, be great. So this is the, the inf infamous image I was saying before, I was mentioning before. Um, so the idea with an adversarial attack is obviously we have this image, 
uh, and we want the ML to classify what the image is. So in this case, let's assume we have this image of a panda and we have a model that is telling, oh, actually that is a panda and I'm 57% confident. And then to that, I'm gonna add some sort of noise that I crafted specifically for this model and specifically for this image that it will turn that classification into something else. And the way I do that, it's again, there's a mathematical uh, formula for this. This is, the, this is a simple uh, fast uh, sign gradient method. Um, I'm, again, I'm not gonna go into the math details, but the idea is that when you train a neural network, you're trying to minimize the loss of classification. So you want to minimize the number of times you're wrong, which makes sense. And in this case, what you do is you simply change the sign of that operation that we use to train to to something that maximizes the times you're wrong. So now we are training a network that it maximizes the chances you're wrong. And then you, you, you see what are those samples that make your network to be wrong most of the time. And then you change the image for that. You also have a, an extra term there to ensure that those samples are not too different from the original images. Because otherwise, yeah, a, an easy way to turn a panda into a gibbon is to literally turn a panda into a gibbon but you don't want that. You want an image that looks like a panda to a human, but to the algorithm, it looks like a, a given. So that's that's more or less the idea with the with the adversarial example. So in, in, so in summary, in summary, if we can go back to the images, yep. what we are doing is we are going to be detecting more or less the, the, the pixels that are affecting the most to this image in this adversarial network and maximizing the error in those pixels to without modifying almost anything, how the image looks like, the artificial intelligence, the model is going to think it is a different animal, right? Yeah, more or less that's the idea. Yeah, We want to change, we want to see the minimal perturbation that we can do on the pixels that will cause the image to be misclassified mm -hmm. in the in the, yeah, in the final classification. Um, but it doesn't have to be, because there are other types of attacks that focus on, on specific pixels. So maybe I want to change only this corner of the image. And that's actually a thing. That's how you do those things that I was telling before that you could put a sticker is that you, you modify only one part of the image. In this case, we're making it much more simpler, like much simpler. So you can modify the whole image, but you don't, you cannot modify it that much. Mm -hmm. So the idea is that it should still resemble a panda for a human, but for the AI, it would completely throw it off. Okay. Okay. So as of now, our model train. Um, yeah. So let's see actually what's what's going on once we test on on those first images that we have before. Okay. So it seems like a model is working pretty well. So this class part, this is the actual class of the thing. This is what our model is predicting, and this is what the confidence is. So our model is correct pretty much on on these cases all the time, and it's very very confident that it's correct. Because it's telling you, I'm 100% sure that this is a turn straight or a right way general. So it's, yeah, it's pretty, it's doing pretty well. Mm -hmm. um, so now that we have this adversarial attack, obviously we could uh, implement this mathematical operation and then, yeah, do it and it will work fine. I'm assuming you guys are not super into this and then you would prefer to use something more like out of the box, some big, something beginner friendly. And that's with this framework comes very handy, clever hands. It's a, you can go to the repo and you can check it, but it's basically um, some researchers, they they bundle a lot of attacks uh, and they're super simple to use. He has support for PyTorch, for TensorFlow, for JAX, pretty much all the major uh, neural network um, frameworks out there. So we're gonna be using that. So yeah, I'm just gonna implement this fast greeting method, which is a very, the simplest attack ever is the one that we were describing before. And I'm trying to see how much I can change the images to cause uh, a misclassification. So this epsilon here controls the amount of noise that I am putting into my images to change them. So mm -hmm. the bigger the epsilon, the more the images are going to change. And also the bigger the chances that our model is going to misclassify. And we're seeing actually that now with a very small epsilon and with minimal changes to the images, we're like, managing to change some some things for example before uh, I mean, just, just, just a second we, we yeah. might need to change the code okay uh okay should i yeah then let's, i'm gonna stop sharing and then yeah let's let's get back should i enter the same one yep okay see you again in a bit <laughs> mm. 
Sorry for that, guys. Cool. Well, so I think this was. I mean, this is pretty interesting. I think it's the most basic demo. Um, I have already done this adversarial attack demo before, but I think it's a very interesting way to get initiated in the cybersecurity world of um, artificial intelligence, definitely. Um, do you want to continue with the demo, Abel? Yeah, you need to enable sh uh, sharing again. Yeah. I mean, at the end, we are we are tricking a functional uh, neural network that you could find in in some place classifying images into misclassify yep. them. It's true that you need to have access to to the model at least to do this attack if you don't perform any kind of uh, brute force reverse engineering. But this it's very interesting how easy this this could be. Yeah, I wanted to touch on that. Like at the at the end of the, of the maybe now that you're mentioning it, it's good to to deal with it. Uh, so yeah, this all of these attacks are white box as of now. Um, we need to have access to the model, uh, and that's sometimes not possible. The good thing though is that um, there are several ways to deal with this. You can actually steal the model. Uh, there are model stealing attacks where you can, um, yeah, actually obtain access to the weights to the inner workings of the model, and then you can do this the confident uh, like the comfort of your home um you can also train a similar model that's what we call a surrogate model and then you train a model with the same data and then you try to see if the attacks that work in that model that you have access to also work on the other one and most of the time it does surprisingly and yeah the other thing you can do is is uh there are also like at uh, attacks that work when you don't have access to the to the inner workings of the model, so black box attacks. So by querying the model, if you have an unlimited amount of queries, you can query the model and then try to reverse engineering the model that way, and then you can also attempt at attacking. But this is yeah, this is the simplest case possible um, where you have access to the model. So like we we're saying before, uh, very minimal perturbation, and we're already uh, messing some classes. For example, yeah, there's no there's no weight trucks now. It's a hundred speed. <laughs> um this right wave general now is a giveaway this turn stray still <laughs> turn stray but yeah you see like this is the actual mask of the noise we introduced so it looks pretty minimal uh let's bump a little bit the epsilon so now we're going to degrade a little bit more the images you see like now there's more noise in the images but now we're completely messing with more of the of the things like now this turn right down this attention general traffic is a traffic light this is a 30 speed with 87. Uh, yeah. It's a traffic so, light, man. Yeah. This right of way crossing is an attention curvy, whatever that is. That sounds like a like a very British thing. An attention curvy. Um so yeah, and if we bumped more the epsilon, now we have a lot of degradation, but then now this, this is complete madness. Like now the model has no idea what's going on, and it's pretty much misclassifying everything. Yeah, and actually, so, yeah. it's misclassifying it, but it's telling you a, a, a very big confidence. Yeah, that's that's another problem, and and this is not only this dumb uh, CNN model that we train. That's pretty much any AI when the AI fails, it doesn't know that it fails. It is still very very confident in the wrong result, and that is a problem. And that is also an open question that we don't know very well how to solve on ML. And there are strategies to deal with it a little bit, but normally when the things fail, they they're still yeah very 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 confident that that they're right even when they're wrong. Mm -hmm. so that's what you're seeing here. Like yeah, there it's failing and it's telling you I'm super confident that this is a hundred speed. So imagine yeah, uh, what this what can happen. And now you see that the noise is actually bigger. The the problem with this type of attack though is that we can change the labels, but we don't we have no way of controlling to what. Yeah. So it's it's an untargeted attack. So it might be useful to mess up with the system, but like, let's say I want to to attack this uh, self-driving car that I have, but I want it to to change. Like every time sees a stop, I want it to go 120 instead. So yeah, to do a targeted attack. So that's what we're gonna do now. Um, this is a different attack. This is a more complicated and much more uh, advanced attack. It's a Scola Carlini Wagner 
uh, L2. That's that's the norm. And then I'm going to turn it into class 8, uh, which is 120 speed. So I'm going to turn all of those images to 120 speed. This one is going to take a little bit more time, uh, some 30 seconds, something like that. So yeah, this is class 8. This is the one I'm turning it to. And, and let's see if we're successful. In this case, again, we are, we're abstracting ourselves from all the math behind it. We're using the function on clever hands because um, it's way easier. And we're telling him to to use a, yeah, a true targeted attack. And this is the kind of like this parameter controls how much of perturbation is kind of like similar to the epsilon before. And let's see if it works. So indeed, as you can see, now everything is predicted as 120 speed. No matter what what signal we're showing the model, it's being predicted at 120 speed. Now the confidence is not that high like before, because obviously this is a targeted and also the perturbations that we did are way smaller. If you compare the degradation of these images with this ones, like it's yeah. it's hard sometimes even for us to know what the issues are. But that's when you see the mask, you still you can see how some shapes and some parts have been changed, but it's not that direct for a human to detect what's going on. And yeah, you can turn everything to 120 speed. So I could imagine like if you if you do this, obviously uh a Tesla is something much more complicated than this, but if you can do something like this effectively, uh, it's mayhem. It can be mayhem. If is there any way to avoid this if an attacker manages to get the the model? Can you generate there a model ways. that is not vulnerable to this attack? Yeah. Well, not completely invulnerable. That's not possible. But there are strategies to mitigate this. One strategy, for example, is you generate these examples yourself, and you show the model how to recognize this. So you train the model with adversarial examples. That's what it's called. That's what's called adversarial training. Actually here, I didn't do it, but it's commented on the on the training. So you can actually have also adversarial examples during training so the model can learn to recognize them. Uh, there are other fancy ways to detect when there are perturbations that you know have been caused by a machine and then you discard those. Um, but yeah, in principle, there are mitigation strategies. Mm -hmm. There is no way to to completely harden your model uh, that is yeah bulletproof. Okay, okay. So, yeah, that's the idea. Uh, well, this is just to, to to yeah to get the the actual calibration. But you can see, um, I'm not going to run the cell. You can see the results from before. Uh, before the accuracy of the model was like eighty, almost ninety percent. With this simple attack, we would mess with half the labels. And then if we do the targeted attack, we pretty much change everything. Only 1% of the samples are classified correctly. Yeah. So completely destroys the model. So uh, uh, I'm, yeah. I, I'm, not, I'm not really sure we, we have time for, for the other demo. Um, OK. Because I wanted yeah, this conversation to be close to one hour, and now we are close to two hours. Uh, <laughs> so yeah. Um, I just the other one uh, mm -hmm. for the people that want to check it. Uh, I'm not going to run it, uh, but it's it's basically the same idea, but on audio. So okay. now we just have an audio data set that controls like some directions, like go down, left, blah blah blah, and then uh, you basically generate some spectrograms of that audio. That's how you would you use the the that thing to feed into a network. So and then you can classify again on on those things. Uh, we have another model. We learn we we train into to. To recognize those commands and then what you can do is have the same type of attack in uh, an audio file so this is for example these are the spectrograms of that thing um and this is yeah the actual audios that you can see with the noise added to because they're completely the same pretty much and yeah. then it causes them all to misclassify entirely what you said so yeah, that's that's the other notebook. It's very similar to this one. In this case, the perturbations are occurring in the audio or in the image of the spectrogram. So the the perturbations are in the image because that's the input to the model, okay. and then you need to map the spectrogram back to audio. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. No. Well, sounds interesting.